In this series of lectures, we will be discussing the respiratory system. We will touch on the difference between the conducting system and the respiratory portion of the system, how air travels from outside of the nasal and oral cavity down and into the lungs to the most distal aspect in which gas exchange occurs, and then we'll finish by looking at the difference in the anatomical characteristics of the right lung versus the left lung, and we'll define what pleura actually is. But in this brief introductory lesson, I want to mainly discuss the functions of the respiratory system as a whole. Consider the main and likely the most obvious function of the respiratory system is this idea of ventilation. And what that means is inhaling oxygen through the oral and nasal cavities, which goes down to the most distal aspects of the lungs to where gas exchange occurs. So that oxygen is taken into the circulatory system and then pumped out to the various tissues of the body. And simultaneously, carbon dioxide is released from the circulatory system and put into the respiratory system, which is then exhaled through the same reverse course we just went through out of the oral and nasal cavities. Typically, the less thought of function, at least beginning in the learning process of the respiratory system, is the idea that the respiratory system also helps regulate the homeostasis or equilibrium of the acid and base balance in the body. In this video, we will discuss the differences between the conducting and the respiratory portions of the respiratory system. We'll look at what makes up each individual segment or portion and what's the general function of each. So let's isolate and look at the two main regions. We'll begin by discussing the conducting portion. The conducting portion is the much larger of the two portions and contains the much larger overall structures. And the general function of the conducting system is to provide a conduit of air from the outside world to travel down through the largely cartilaginous structures and, and provide air into the actual respiratory portions. Now along the way, the conducting portion will heat up the air. It also has a series of mucus that helps trap any kind of foreign objects that might damage the respiratory portion and block air from coming in. Let's define some of the actual structures within the conducting portion. So if I rotate the model sideways, the conducting portion includes the nasal cavity, continuing back into the nasopharynx, the oral cavity, continuing back into the oropharynx, both of which then come down into the laryngopharynx, and then continue anteriorly into the larynx. From there, if we turn right back towards the anterior position, the larynx then continues as the trachea, which then bifurcates into a left and right main or primary bronchus. From there, the primary bronchi divide into secondary and tertiary bronchi, and continuing to have smaller and smaller branches with less and less cartilage and smooth muscle, and they continue to get smaller and smaller just like a branches off of a tree continue to get smaller and smaller as they dissipate and go further away from the main trunk. The final branches of the conducting portion are called terminal bronchioles, which we cannot see here. But that brings us then into the respiratory portion of the respiratory system. And these are all such small structures that I had to bring in an image to help depict their layout. Now the main function of the respiratory portion is the actual exchange of gas between the respiratory system here outlined in purple and the circulatory system you can see here as arteries and veins. The respiratory portion includes these large tubes coming down called respiratory bronchioles which branch into a number of what are called alveolar ducts and each alveolar duct terminates as this bundle of alveoli which have the appearance of a bundle of grapes. It's at these alveoli that the gas, whether it's oxygen coming in or CO2 going out, is exchanged between the alveoli and the circulatory system that overlies the alveoli.